Hey you guys, so the topic of healing has been kind of just running through everything we've been learning together as we started this group and I just wanted to share something with you that I think will help so many of you, blessed me so much. Last night my husband and I were talking about just healing in general and another group that we're a part of, some people are really struggling with the fact that God wants you well. Um, and understandably so. We see lots of evidence to the contrary if we're going to put our faith in God, His truth always coming to pass, right? Um, we have people that are sick, that are dying, all of these things all around us despite people praying for them, right? And so there was one individual who has just got the greatest heart and who knows Jesus as his Savior and somebody in his family um, is, has really suffered. And he was really, really struggling, really coming against this teaching that, you know, God always wants you well, that that is um, his desire. And we were talking about that last night, and God brought me to my, my mind Matthew 13. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. For those of you that are learning by everything you see in the Word and learning to look at your situations and say, okay, just because what I see here doesn't line up with what God says, I'm going to choose to take God's word over what I see and let God change the situation. Okay? So Jesus himself was talking to um, the masses, and it's the story of the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. It says, later that same day, Jesus left the house and went down to the shore where an immense crowd came together. Everybody wants to know right? He got into the boat where he sat and taught as people listened on the shore and told many stories. A farmer went out to plant some seed, he said. <clears throat> as he scattered it across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The plants sprang up quickly, but they soon wilted beneath the hot sun and died because the roots had no nourishment in the shallow soil. Other seeds fell among thorns that shot up and choked out the tender blades. But some seeds fell on fertile soil and produced a crop that was 30, 60, even 100 times that as it had been planted. Anyone who was willing to hear should listen and understand. His disciples came and asked him, Why do you always tell stories? They asked. And he explained to them, You have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom, but others have not. To those who are open to my teaching, more will be given. And to those... And they will have an abundance. But those to those who are not listening, even what I, they do have will be taken away from them. This is why I tell these stories, he said, because people see what I do, but they don't really see. They hear what I say, but they don't really hear, and they don't understand. Ah, are we not walking in the same times as Jesus walked? I mean, this has just been the truth for our world. Even believers with the well-intentioned hearts who were never taught what the truth is, the truth of the entire gospel and what he, Jesus actually accomplished, they see it and they don't understand, right? So Jesus says, this, this fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, you will hear my words, but you will not understand. You will see what I do, but you will not perceive its meaning. For the hearts of these people are hardened. Their ears can't hear. Their eyes have closed. So their eyes can't see and their ears can't hear and their hearts can't understand. And they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. Now, we were just talking about the words for healing, right? We know therapy is most commonly when people, when Jesus would go and physically lay hands on. We know um, sozo is the one a lot of times used for eternal salvation, but it's also for physical healing um, or anything saving. Like Peter walked in the water and he said, Lord, save me. Same word. Um, we learn the word hegase. I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, but that's physical um, wholeness, soundness. In, um, for So if somebody was maimed, they lost an arm, and Jesus laid their hands on them, their arm came back. Okay? Those are all those. The fourth one, Ia Omahi. I-A-O-M-A-I. That is um, instantaneous healing. Like the centurion who came and talked to Jesus and say, Lord, you don't even need to come. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, whoa. <laughs> Never have I seen such great faith your servants healed. Okay, that's the word we're dealing with here. Jesus said, their eyes can't see, their ears can't hear, their hearts can't understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me iahomahi them. Pretty awesome. Whew. Okay, so then he turns, he's talking to the disciples and he says, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I assure you, many prophets and godly people have longed to see and hear what you have seen and heard, but they could not. You guys, Prophets of old have wanted this revelation. They've been waiting for the day when this would be truth. We look at the whole Bible and we think, see, well, Elijah didn't see it. Uh, David didn't see it. Solomon didn't see it. Why should we? You know, who are we? But the fact is, it's not about who are we. 
It's about who is he. And Jesus did it. It's accomplished. And we walk in the fullness of what he accomplished on the cross. It's so exciting. <sighs> okay. So verse 18. Now here's the explanation of the story I told you, Jesus said. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the good news about the kingdom and don't understand it. So what are we dealing with here? The kingdom he's talking about. The seed is the good news about the kingdom. What's the kingdom? You know, we hear that and it just kind of sometimes goes in one ear and out the other. The kingdom, um, if we have right here, it says uh, in Matthew 10, 8 is when one specific example where Jesus was commanding his disciples, his followers, to go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast off demons, all of that. Right before that, he says, preach the kingdom of God is here. It's here. Go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. This is, he was demonstrating the kingdom when he walked in the flesh. That's what he did. People thought it was this new world that was coming. He was going to literally sit on a throne there. But he's telling you this is what the kingdom is, right? Romans 4.17 says, the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit, you guys? In us. We're bringing the kingdom where we go. We have that potential. So this is the seed. The, the good news about the kingdom is the seed that he's talking about. The first seed fell on a hard path. That represents people who hear it. They, they hear that this is possible. They don't understand it. So what happens? The evil one comes and, and snatches it away. It snatches it out of their hearts. How many people do you know who hear this and they just, they just don't get it and they don't dig and they don't want to learn more. And so it doesn't even land in their hearts. It doesn't stay. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message and they receive it. They're so excited. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go down deep. They haven't heard this and heard it and learned it. And maybe they just heard it and they want it so badly. So it starts. But as soon as they get, it starts to wilt because problems come or they're persecuted. And why does it say? Because they believe the word. How many times have I seen people who hear what God is saying to them, whether I pray with them or not, and they're so excited and they even see I, I had a friend who um, couldn't even walk on one leg. She was She's a marathon runner, literally runs 50 miles at a pop. And she had such pain, such tremendous pain. And um, I just kept seeing her post these things on Facebook over and over. And I finally was like, okay, I'm just, uh, get over yourself, Lisa, share it. And I, I just shared it with her, who God really meant, what he meant for us to have on this earth, what Jesus really accomplished. And that it's all in his forgiveness on the cross. Like, he was crushed for it. And um, she accepted that. And as she read my words, she wrote me back that she was just in tears and her legs started shaking. And she said it was totally healed, totally healed, right? For two, she got up that next day, ran 20 plus miles, next day, 30 plus miles, totally healed. But a month later, it started to come back. And her life has been, you know, back struggling with that. And she's wondered why, you know, why did I get it? Why didn't I? Well, when you grab it at first, you have to stay in it. You have to keep hearing these words. You have to remind your, your heart in the midst of all of all of the lies that Satan wants us to look at outside, that this is my God and this is his heart for me. Okay, so those are the young plants on the soil that don't have deep roots. The next one is thorny ground. That represents those who hear and accept the good news, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares of this life and the lures of wealth. So no crop is produced. These are people who just don't even see it happen because there's too much on their heart. There's too much that they're weighted with. When Jesus told them, I took your, I took your worries, lay it at me. All you are heavy burdened. Take my yoke upon you and I'll give you rest. Okay. The people, I, I've been one of those people many times myself who keeps it on my shoulders instead of accepting what he did and saying, okay, I'll take it because Lord, I'm laying it down. All of this, this world, it's too hard for me. But until we get to that point where we actually lay it down, it can stop us from receiving all that he did. It doesn't stop him from giving it. He gave it. It says in here that the sower is, is throwing the same seed on all of these soils. It's kind of, who are we as the receivers? How are we taking that message? And the last one says the good soil represents the heart of those who truly accept God's message and produce a huge harvest. There's something that's on my heart here just to say, it doesn't say it's a good heart that he doesn't receive it. It says it's a good soil represents the heart of those who truly accept God's message. So it's not an issue of, oh, somebody's more worthy. Somebody's, you know, not sinned or done any of that. Not at all. The good heart is what it means is truly accepts God's message. Truly says, I don't get it. I don't get it, Lord, but your word says it. So, so be it. It's kind of like Mary when Jesus sent the, or when God sent the angels to her and said, you're going to have God's son. 
she's like, what? I don't even understand what that means. I'm a virgin. I'm not even married yet. What are you talking about? And the angel said, you know, you don't have to worry about it. The Holy Spirit's going to come. He's going to do the work. Don't worry about it. And you know what she said? Our word says, ah, be it unto me as you have said. That's what our Bible say. You know what she said? Amen, amen. I don't understand, Lord. But be it unto me as you have said. And I think if we could just grasp that and let our hearts be good soil, Lord, I may not understand it, but I know your word says it. So be it unto me as you have said. And what does Jesus say? Those, those hearts, they produce a huge harvest. 30, 60, even 100 times as much has been planted. Who doesn't want that? I know I do. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, be encouraged that regardless of what you've seen happen, if you've gone out on a limb and you said, okay, Lord, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray because you said I, through me, you will heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast off demons, raise the dead. I'm giving you my hand. Work through it. Don't give up, you guys. Don't give up.